for psychological I understand why the Commonwealth is presenting it. The, whether or not the exemption would apply has nothing to do with the particular okay. exemption. So we'll just use it. Right. Now, uh, Dr. Johnson, in addition to speaking to groups around the world, uh, you've also spoken on some radio shows. Yes, sir, all the time. Uh, and one of those is uh, called the, Bre the Breakfast Club on Power 105 out of New York City. Yes, sir. Come here. I'm going to show you a video clip of this case. Sorry. I admonished everyone that I would not tolerate the outburst. If you cannot control yourself, please excuse yourself at this time. We'll give you a moment. Because the parties need that respect. The next outburst, and you will be here, you will be dismissed from the seat. The parties deserve the respect and ability to hear what's going on in this particular case. Thank you. So if you need to excuse yourself, don't get embarrassed. I would rather you excuse yourself rather than being confused. Uh, thank you. Um, Dr. Johnson, do you recognize uh, the image that's on the screen there? Yes, I do. Is that a true and accurate uh, copy of your, or image of your website? Not my website, but that's a true and accurate image of the interviews that I participated in at the Breakfast Club in New York City. Okay, all right. Now, I mean, if you look up at the top uh, left-hand corner, it, it, has, it has your website name there. Let me clarify. I'll take that back. My web designer, he adds videos of mine. So, yes, I will not check the property of my website. Yes. So, all right. Um, this entire page you're looking at, all, all, it's like six screens. That's all on the website. Yeah, it appears to be. Okay. Yes, man. Who updates regularly? I don't watch it all the time, but I, very likely, yes, I'm not objecting to that. I see the website. And Bob has a CD that will think. And that's your C3. That's my, actually, that's my uh, C5. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, Dr. Johnson, uh, well, all right. Um, Power 105, uh, that's an urban contemporary radio station in New York City. Yes, sir. And uh, studios are in the AT&T in Manhattan. Is that what I'm not sure of the name of the building, but yes, it's there. And uh, the Breakfast Club, that's a nationally syndicated radio show. Yes, it is. Very popular. Uh, now, one of your interviews with the Breakfast Club, uh, took place on June 30th, is that correct, 27? Probably, yes. Um, are you aware that the Breakfast Club rated that interview, uh, number nine, among the top ten interviews? Of the yes, it should have been higher, yes. All right, all right. Uh, and that that interview right there that we're looking at uh, is, is the interview of, that was rated number nine, is that correct? The one on June Yes, that was the most recent, yes, yes. Interview number three. I guess to a specific time. Please bear with me.
learn in college are not necessarily marketable to other black people. I'm a psychologist. Thank you. Do you agree that you call yourself a psychologist? Then? Yes, I am. Certified school psychologist. And one thing I would like to add, although I understand that it's the state's intent <coughs> to say that every time I refer to myself as a psychologist, that I am practicing beyond the limits or holding myself as something I am not. The irony in that is whenever I get interviewed, probably even at the beginning of this interview, I always state specifically what I am, certified school psychologist and doctor of clinical psychology. Thereafter, I may refer to myself as psychologist in conversation, but there is never a time when my credentials are not stated forthright. On my website, they're stated forthright. In the exhibit he just gave, it says it right there, certified school psychologist. So when you get psychologist after I've already said certified school, then it should automatically make sense or be understandable that he's referring to a credential he's already made clear that he had. When I'm at work in schools, they don't call us certified school psychologists every time they refer to us. They call us psychologists. The school district put up with psychologists. Chester up with psychologists. Anywhere the school psychologist is, we're called psychologists. No one regurgitates over and over certified school psychologists. So we're reaching here. <coughs> so uh, what you said is that on um, that show right there, you, at the beginning of it, told the audience that you were a certified psychologist? If not that one, definitely in two and one. There's been three breakfast clubs, so I'm very familiar with that audience. And if you look at all three videos, yes, I state that I'm a certified school psychologist and doctor of clinical psychology. Particularly, I'm certified on the very first one. That's a, that's a third follow-up to the first one. And yes, I do state who I am and what I am. So it's possible that you do not stay in number three, you would have to watch it. I can't say for certain, but again, because the audience is familiar with me, my community is familiar with me, my work is specifically to my community. I've been doing it for 17 years. Three is a student after 20 years. I can assure you, black people know exactly what my credentials are and what they are not. The entirety of the interview is, um, is recorded on to this slide. The entirety of the interview, this is interview three or two? This is three. The orange, now she is interview three, and one to the right is interview two. And I was the interview one of it. On the CD, would it include interviews one and two? Only? Uh, <clears throat> uh, I have separate CDs. Um, this one, uh, C5, is uh, the interview. We just talked about um, the other interviews you can see on the screen. Uh, I have a different CD. And about that. So, interview one will be included. That's my understanding. That's what you guys are going to tell you correctly. That interview one is on the other CD. Excuse me. Um, is that interview one? That's the interview three. Right? Interview three in the orange. Yes. Okay. In the Black and green. Interview two. That's interview two. I do not have a scene uh, of interview one. Uh, I'm happy to stipulate um, that the board, for you, uh, uh, could view that as a combo exhibit or as a response. Is interview one contained on the website? Is yes, the they're all on the website. Yes. Okay. So if I were to go to um, it's Dr. Lamar Johnson. Com. It is one on the website. I'm not sure. Okay. I would have to see. But it would be no problem to get you one if I could just grab it off the internet. You can also if I had an email or something. Can you download it to a CD? Or whatever the apparatus is called. Okay. CD, DVD, whatever. I can have that done and mail it in. Well, or it is. And that's what we talked about, about the beginning. So in 30 days. Okay. They'll talk into me. Okay. CC a copy of the letter to Mr. Kelly indicating this is what he okay. is milking it. Um, do you need a copy of the your back? Uh, we'll need to have a couple of these satisfied with whatever submitted for the, for the record of the receipt. All right. And so then we'll keep the record open 30 days after today. Okay. Go by and mail it in. Once you get that in, in 30 days, then I'll post the record. Yes. So, before we finish today, please make sure that we go back through that to make sure we have it 
um, the outline of proper exhibit numbers. <laughs> yes, we're going to do that shit. So you'll be right. And we'll give you the exhibit number. Yes, but make sure we discuss that before we walk out. Okay. All right, so the C5 is the uh, CD of interview number three. Dr. Johnson, any objection to this commission? Uh, no, ma'am. All right. It is so is this two or three or just three? That's, that's just three. Just okay, three. just three. And the reason I'm only asking that, because although I'm certain I stayed my credentials on one, I may have stayed in on two. It is possible I stayed on three. It's possible it could have stayed in all three, but certainly the first one. So I wanted to make sure you have all three. So do I need to give you one and two, but this is only three? It sounds like only one because the column is going to introduce the other interview. Two and three. That's what it sounds like. Okay. I think I will clear it up with this. We can't call my house. No, I'm not clear. We're, no. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll admit this one. one. We'll admit C5. Okay. Understand this is interview three. Gotcha. Then as we proceed, I understand they're going to introduce another CD. Yes. We'll see what interview comes up. Yes, sir. Whatever is left, then you're going to provide by mailing in a copy of that. Yes, sir. All right. So we'll hit C5. Radio interview um, to refer to uh, Dr. Johnson. Uh, if you recall having been interviewed on a radio show called Stand Up Now from 1440 WFAM Radio Detroit? Probably. I do 20 radio interviews a week. Okay, I'm sure. And this is what number? Uh, this would be exhibit C6. To clarify that a certified school psychologist can do private work doing the same things they do in the school outside of the school if they're employed by a policy. And do you agree that that uh, video tape that we just uh, watched is available to viewers on the internet? Yes. How uh, about viewers for admissions to the C6? In addition to the <coughs> uh, No, ma'am. Clarifying point for what purpose? As I understand the follow up question. Aspect of Mr. Kelly, the issue being the private practice, but it also contains what you were saying the certified uh, school specialist. Exactly. And are we clear here in going forward that the code does specifically state that a certified school psychologist employed 
can fight this privately. Are we clear on that? We will take notice of all applicable law. Okay, okay. At the conclusion, the right. evidence is needed to apply it. <coughs> so, with and that, again, reiterating that although I have that right, all of my work is done in a school building. There is no private work done other than the speaking or I'm called to train. Uh, we're going to call to do an independent educational evaluation in another district in a school in Pennsylvania. Understood. Uh, there was sort of a, an exception to the admission of C6 that you noted. It is on the record. So there wasn't exactly an objection, but your statement that you made is obviously contained in the record. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Question on the clarify question. I noticed what the first exhibit was 2014. And of course, we're here because I'm being accused of practicing psychology without a license. If this goes back to 2014, and I remember the first time I was contacted by an investigator from the Bureau of Professional Affairs, and Mr. Ernest Dixon, I believe his name was, an African American, I met with him at King of Prussia in office there, his office. And he interviewed me, I answered all his questions, he shook my hand, and I believe he said, you know, just be careful, but I don't see anything here. That was a 2014, 2015. But what is the clarifying point? Okay, the clarifying point is, if the state felt that I was practicing psychology without a license, why did they wait all those four years to say something to me about it? I understand. I don't know if we're going to, that okay. will come out. Okay. The course of proceeding, uh, and so I did not rule the motion because it is not testifying. What you just said is not considered testimony. You're not sworn in at this time, so I'm not going to rule the objection. It's not going to be considered testimony. Or, or should it though? Because that's a part of this that I met with. It is okay. what it can be, and okay. then once the final press, you will become your sworn in, and that is where you want to go with your testimony. And now, obviously, he's going to voice an objection at that time. The okay. one he just stated. Regarding being hearsay, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Who is sworn in? We have not sworn He is not the sworn in. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, you are, because we are under no sworn in. And you're you actually going to call this a common witness. So, therefore, his objection is that when you said the investigator told me that that was hearsay. And so, whenever you have a statement that is made outside of uh, a testimonial atmosphere, then you have to have a certain exception before it should be admitted. So you can't testify to what someone told you or what someone said. Understood. Are investigators required to submit some sort of summary or anything after they meet with someone for the purposes of an investigation? Should that have been a summary document or something that he would have been required to file as a result of meeting with them in his office in King of Russia? I would think that's for the Commonwealth to determine because it's the Commonwealth investigator. I, I cannot think of any particular statute that says the investigator for the Commonwealth has to reduce all interviews to a written or recorded form. So I cannot, you know, respond to that particular statement. But nevertheless, for the purposes of what we just went through, that portion of what the investigator said will not be admitted for this case. The date that you spoke about. When it occurred, obviously that is an inspiration. Next, the comment uh, has a date C7, which is another uh, recording from the practice club. That's on the
but they don't know how this operates. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how the child goes from the classroom into the special education system. Okay. So they have to be taught how it operates, you follow? So we understand that police uh, genocide is a problem for the black community. We understand that uh, structural inequality, disproportionality, i.e. racism is a problem. But do we understand how racism operates? So I think that once you understand how the problem operates and manifests itself, you're now in a position to solve it. Mm. Someone comes to me for therapy. Before I do any therapy, what I do? A clinical history. Mm. Is there depression in your family? Have you been depressed before? Have you ever contemplated suicide? So I have to understand your background and how you've been living your life in order to solve your current everyday problem. So now, come and do you recognize that video? Yes, sir. Is that an uh, image of yourself describing your private practice? Yes and no. Because I think the question is going to be about therapy. Well, my question just is, is that an image of you describing your private practice? No, sir. It's not an image of you describing your No. Practice. And I'll clarify what I can. All right, go. Okay. I am a therapist. I have been. Different organizations filled up. Health Center, Children's Crisis Treatment Center. I was there in our pre doctoral internship with the Department of Youth and Family Services, a Ewing Residential Treatment Center. I did therapy uh, while attending the Philadelphia Osteopathic Medicine, my clinical practicums, and the Center for Brief Therapy. I have been a therapist for most of my career. Do I do therapy in private practice? Of course not. Certified school psychologists don't do therapy. We do school psychological counseling. But have I been a therapist? Absolutely. I've done it for years. And the two principal organizations that I've done it from, although I have since resigned, was the Children's Crisis Treatment Center, where I was an outpatient therapist for children and families, as well as the Philadelphia Mental Health Center, where I did some of my doctoral clinical practicums. And I was asked to stay on and continue being a therapist in Philadelphia we have a very large behavioral health system, which is filled with master's level and PhD level therapists who are not licensed, who work under the supervision of a licensed psychologist. So yes, I have been a therapist. And no, it is not included in my work as a certified school psychologist. Outside the school is therapy. In the school is school psychological counseling, and that's also what the state code. No, as long as we're clear on my clarification. Understood. Well, admit it. This is that interview number two, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, admit it. Just as a clarifying point. There's no one else. 
The second point, and I'm not guilty of anything, but when I look at these costs, how were they computed given the fact that all we see is YouTube clips and a website? And it certainly don't cost $2,400 to look at a Breakfast Club interview. So these investigative, investigative costs are coming from where? How is this being calculated? Uh, I understand uh, Dr. Johnson's question. Uh, I don't think that his question goes to the accessibility of the document. Uh, it may go to uh, the amount of charges if he wants to contest them. Um, but as, as far as these, this document being uh, admissible under the general rules of administrative practice and procedure, uh, I believe uh, it needs to be So his response is that uh, under the law, there are two different categories of ways of paying for things. Whether something is admissible, like whether or not it actually meets the criteria under the state of rules and evidence to be admitted as an exhibit. And so he's saying that the document, um, there should not be anything to bar its admissibility because it's a certified document. Whether or not the actual cost, as is outlined, whether or not I should give any weight to the amount listed in the certificate and attestation, that that is something that you can contest. So whether or not that document actually is a certificate and attestation, unless you have an, accept, an exception to that, I must admit whether or not it actually should be $2,400 odd dollars, then you can actually contest that through your testimony and through what interaction you have had with an investigator. Yes. So, <coughs> other than that, the actual amount of cost, do you have any objection to see? No, I am not of the amount of cost. I will admit, uh, Commonwealth C4. <coughs> Myself, but like there's more than a hundred videos of me that have been uploaded of others who have attended my lectures. But the videos I would have uploaded, most of them would have been from my Tuesday morning Black Parent Teleconference, where I give advice to parents on issues relative to special education and mental health of Black children, <coughs> uh, and some tutorials that I do, and other commentary I do on general issues affecting African people. Uh, but most videos are uploaded by others, not myself. But dozens for me, definitely does. Because I do it every Tuesday. Thank you. All right, so if uh, this were uh, another witness who didn't have the option to cross examine the witness, I'm assuming you don't cross examine yourself. So I think you should respond to the type of question that he asked. So we do that when we come to your case in chief, because we should do so. Okay, so if I want to ask him some questions, is this the time I'm going to well, he's not a witness. But questions about the case. Questions about his case. About this exhibits case. that have been specifically items that he has presented so far. Yes, and the charge mm -hmm. itself. If it pertains to what has been presented so far, you can testify to that at this point. If, so, you, okay. if you want to go into the applicability of the exemption. And that would be more so for your case in chief if we wanted to. I'm not sure if you're going to call any additional witnesses today. No, there's no more witnesses for his case in chief. Understood. So they're they're about to rest their case. Okay. So we're, we're about to turn to you anyway to okay. say begin your case. Okay. If you want to do that way, that's make it smooth for Okay. All right. So your exhibit C1, C2. C four, five, six, and seven fit in fit. There are no other exhibits. <coughs> All right. Uh, with that on the rest, we're going to turn to Dr. Johnson. Before we actually move into your case, to you, Dr. Johnson, Mr. Blake, can you come here? Very well, Dr.
What you think about the sister? Was she fair or you think she was? She was fair. She understood what was supposed to do. It was close up. She never had none of that shit. Because that part of the video scene, that shit was so good. When I got out of it. So the police were just like that shit. So the police were just like that shit. She said, I don't know what she asked. Ah, I see what you said. Overload on. Right, exactly. You wanted to do this as all prejudicial. What they gave was prejudicial. I see what you said. They say it. Because you only give it a clip. Right, so you're not sure the whole thing, so you can't First of all, if you object to that shit, you're right. 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 Black Paul! Go ahead, bro. Black Power. Black Power! Black Power! Dr. Umar Johnson, the Prince of Pan Africanism, we live. Go ahead, bro. Everybody get their camera out. You got 60 seconds. Your Facebook, your Instagram live, whatever you want to do. Did the attorney make it? No. Attorney Matt Oxy didn't make it? No. All right. All right. Brothers and sisters. This is Dr. Umar Johnson. We are live, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, capital city of Commonwealth, Pennsylvania, for Dr. Umar Johnson versus the state of Pennsylvania. The case today was about a charge against me, accusing me of holding myself out as, in practicing, as a licensed psychologist without a license. The evidence that they showed, and I could not believe it, and everybody here saw it. The evidence that they showed were two clips from my second and third Breakfast Club interview and a screenshot from my 2014 website. Let me say this again. This is the evidence. Two clips from my Breakfast Club interview two and three and a screenshot from my 2014 website. They show no evidence of me having conducted a single evaluation a single therapy session they can't find any evidence of me having ever performed any work as a clinical psychologist except under the supervision of a clinical psychologist the case was bogus it was nonsense the closing argument was that i do therapy with adults everyone who knows me knows i specialize in what Children and all my work is school based. And you never said you was licensed. And I never said I was licensed. This is being done, and, and by the way, I asked to know who made the initial complaint against me. They said that it's confidential. It's confidential, and I don't have a right to know what it is or what it was. That is nonsense. I have a right to face my accuser. That is nonsense. And unfortunately, brothers and sisters, I don't think it was one complaint. I know it wasn't. Because every time investigators contacted me, they said they received yet another one. And I believe coons, coons, as well as Caucasians. This situation. But I also believe that the State Board of Psychology of Pennsylvania is jealous of the fact that an unlicensed certified school psychologist with a doctor of clinical psychology can have the type of international reputation that they do not have. And the reason we have to fight is because if we let them do it to any one of us, they'll do it to all of us. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sit together. Sit together. And for those of y'all who have cameras, put that camera on all these brothers and sisters who came out here in the cold to support Dr. Umar Johnson. Black power. 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 It's snowing. These brothers and sisters forsake their jobs, their livelihoods, their children, 
They got their own financial issues, as we all do, but they cared enough about Dr. Umar Johnson to come on out here. Yeah. Yeah. You know you, brother. You got yeah. 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 Brothers and sisters came from the West Coast, from the Midwest, from the deep dark, the deep South. Parents came with their children to support me, and I just want to say thank you to all of you. Love you. Thank you. Love you. And even if they, one thing I don't like about this is the decision gets made by the state board who are not even present. Uh -uh. The hearing officer is only the mediator. <laughs> so she doesn't make the decision. She makes a recommendation. She don't make the decision. She makes a recommendation to the state board of psychology who you know can't stand my guts. So I'm saying all that to say, no matter what the outcome, we still going to fight. Yes, sir. We got a school to build. Yes, sir. Frederick Douglass Marcus right. Garvey Academy at 82119. Black people will have the last laugh. Black power. 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 Black